I was young and it was one of my first movies and I'm going to set and I auditioned and you know, everybody had to come in their bikini, got the role. He goes, yeah, yeah, so the, the bikini top, yeah, just lose it, it doesn't work. Okay, everybody, action. I'm like, can you take my bikini top off? And then he goes, yeah, yeah, you got a problem with that? That intimidation at that moment, having to make that decision right there on the spot and I did it. And then I come back and he plays Nola on my tits. So we want to stop that from yeah. happening to young <laughs> yes. actresses. That's actress and legend Rosanna Arquette. She was one of the first women to blow the whistle on Harvey Weinstein when she spoke to The New Yorker about her harassment. Now, decades after being passed over for jobs and spied on. You think you were spied on, right? I know we have proof. We have proof that he did spy on me. She's back on our screens in the female-centric comedy, Sideswiped. With everything going on, in the world right now, having something to laugh about is refreshing for all of us. But what's it like to be a Hollywood A-lister and then suddenly blacklisted? I'm Elisa Kreisinger, and as a white woman on the internet, I have a lot of opinions. Each week, I set out to prove myself wrong by talking to an expert who might not have all the answers, but they certainly know more than I do. That's why this is Strong Opinions Loosely Held. Okay, for those of you who don't know, Rosanna Arquette is an American legend. She starred alongside Madonna in Desperately Seeking Susan, she was in the cult classic Pulp Fiction, and she had two hit pop songs written about her in the 80s. You know, Rosanna by Toto and In Your Eyes by Peter Gabriel. Take me all the way, da na na, Rosanna, yeah. I love that song. But when she was at the height of her career, she was invited to Harvey Weinstein's hotel room for a meeting. Can you talk about the original harassment? The original harassment happened um, just like a lot of the women. I had a film that I was supposed to do and get a, a new script from Harvey, having dinner with him at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And I arrive at the hotel and they say, Mr. Weinstein, we'll see you upstairs. And I was like, I immediately went, like, you felt that danger, danger. You feel it and you know. And I was like, ah. You know, and he opens in his white bathrobe. Oh, Rosanna, I, I can't move my neck. I, I can't move my neck. And I was like, oh, I have a massage for you. He goes, no, 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 Rosanna. And he grabbed, I was like, <laughs> you know, and I just went, and he goes, you're making a very big mistake. And I said, I'll never be that girl. And I went down the elevator and it was a significant change in life. After she refused his advances, Arquette says that Weinstein ruined her career in retaliation. We have proof that he did spy on me. How did you know? Ronan, the New Yorker found it all. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So you didn't find out until a year ago that you had been spied on the no, majority of your career. No, it all makes sense. Agents pressured her to be quiet, even female ones. I had told people this and mm -hmm. nobody would listen, mm -hmm. you know, and then they said, you better keep your mouth shut. But she wasn't the only actress whose career was damaged by Weinstein's desire for payback. Daryl Hannah, Mira Sorvino, Asia Argento, and Rose McGowan were also vocal about Weinstein's abuse, and they saw their career suffer as a result. But there were other actresses, you say, too, who you came up with who were similarly blacklisted? Yeah, Daryl Hannah. Now, Daryl Hannah's story is really, really important in all of this because she had a witness. She said no to his advances? Yes. And then she couldn't get work after that? No, badly. It was terrible. Were there other actresses? All of us, everybody who came out were affected. You see Peter Jackson coming out and saying that he was talked out of seeing Ashley Judd or Mira mm -hmm. Savino for Lord of the Rings. So we all have compared notes and it, it's the same story. Do you ever think about the roles that if you weren't retaliated against that you would have or could have played? Yeah, there's there were a few, there were a few, but it is what it is and I guess that's my path. So I don't feel resentful, I feel angry for the women who were raped, I really, really do. Last year, Arquette helped spark the international Me Too movement when she confided in New Yorker journalist Ronan Farrow and connected him to other actresses who were ready to speak out about Weinstein. Did you know that you were gonna be one of the first voices to come out to start Me Too? I didn't know that. I did know that this was important to talk about, to gather women who were I respected and were respected in the industry and discuss these themes. When Ronan approached you, did you fear that you were gonna face backlash again for coming forward? Because you had been blacklisted, you yeah. say, throughout your career yeah. for coming forward about Harvey. So yeah. were you afraid your career was gonna suffer even more? Um, yeah, I was, but I thought it was important enough. Really, I'm doing this for my daughter. I'm doing this for young women who are coming up in this business who need to feel safe. A lot of people try to shame you and say, oh, well, you did that 
really happen or you're lying. And, and what we are seeing is men are shaking in their boots and they're so enraged because this, a, this is a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. It's here. Me Too is causing a paradigm shift in Hollywood to focus on female-centric stories. That's something that Arquette did early on in her career, but she didn't realize how rare it was. It's interesting because the movie I did with Madonna called Desperately Seeking Susan 30 years ago was written by a woman, directed by a woman, produced by women, and about women, and the studio head was Barbara Boyle at Orion Pictures who found the project and was our executive. It was groundbreaking and the first of its kind. Did you ever make another movie with that many women involved again? Not like that, no. Except, wait, and, and sideswiped. And yeah. now next year, it's all gonna be all female directors. In her new YouTube premium series, Arquette joins comedian Carly Craig and actress Chelsea Frey in a multi-generational comedy about online dating created by Craig herself. Arquette plays their fiery single mother dating on Tinder, and she pushes her daughter to swipe right on all 252 of her matches. Tell me about Sideswipe. What drew you to the project in the first place? Carly is the creator of the show, and she really did go on like 269 dates or something, and, then, and she wrote this show based on that. And what drew you to Mary, the mother? Because Mary is an immature child who... <laughs> she was fun to play. <laughs> It was really a stretch for me. You know, it's so fun to laugh and do, you know, I've played a lot of dark characters for a lot of years, so I love being light and having fun. So yeah. for that, I'm, I'm looking forward to people tuning in into the show and falling in love with these characters. Let's be honest, after being blacklisted from Hollywood, Arquette deserves to do a comedy. In the last year, she has taken on the role of Hollywood changemaker. And I don't know about you, but I am so happy she's back on our screens.